and also be you. Please pray. <clears throat> Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who in the Son and Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the last one. A reading from the book of Isaiah. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me! I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 29. We'll read it responsibly by half verse. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord, the glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters, the God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf. And Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe. And serves the Lord's bear. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, Glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as King forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you are put to death, the, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me, please stand for our sequence hymn and the proclamation of the gospel. Our hymn is Come Thou Mighty King, number 365.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not where where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things, and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> Almighty God, bestow on us the meaning of words, the light of understanding, the nobility of diction and faith of the true nature, and grant that we believe when we also speak. Amen. Amen. So you can always tell how comfortable people feel with various theological concepts by how they take the Lord's name in vain. You know, we, we throw out the word God uh, all the time. We're sort of comfortable with that concept. We bandy <laughs> Jesus' name around. Holy trouble, Jesus Christ. Um, sometimes we throw the, uh, the middle initial in there. Uh, but you never hear somebody exclaim, Oh, Trinity! Um, <laughs> because most people are uncomfortable with the concept and, and the notion of a holy and undivided Trinity. It, it can feel removed and mysterious, kind of a, a dusty theological topic after the empty tomb of Easter, the glorious ascension, and the punch-drunk Pentecost. But um, for your benefit, on the back of your bulletin, uh, the fabulous Sean Sloan has copied the Athanasian Creed to give you a sense of just how difficult it is to articulate a proper understanding of the Trinity. It's, it's painstaking. The Apostles' Creed, Relatively short, uh, the Nicene Creed that we confess every Sunday, a little longer, still doable. 
Uh, but the Athanasian Creed has got some heavy 5th century furniture in it. And, and if we said this out loud uh, this morning, as is custom, you'd be late for brunch, which I won't tolerate. Uh, but a lot of churches out there don't even say the creeds during their worship services. Many, many Christians are only familiar with the McLean Creed, which is only seven verses. Uh, the, the three men I admire most, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, took the last train to the coast the day the music died. God bless you. Uh, he's, coming in, 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 he's coming to Kalispell in September. Um, and again, most of, us, most of us really don't get the Trinity, and part of me thinks that that, that is the belief. Uh, the doctrine of the Trinity is mysterious, and, and we should fall on our knees in humility and be glad on some level that God is hard to understand. Because anytime you feel like you understand God totally, you need to find a new God. Uh, God is, is holy and other, and that should stretch our minds and hearts and souls to the breaking point. So this morning, I, I want to talk Isaiah, I want to talk Romans, and I want to talk uh, John 3, and hopefully you will leave here with something about the Trinity that will stick to your bones. Because if we didn't have the Trinity, we would be stuck with the God that we find in Isaiah 6. In this incredible passage, one of my favorites in the scriptures, the prophet Isaiah is given this vision of God where he is taken up to the Lord's throne room. And this prophet is at a loss for words, which is hard for a prophet. He sees God surrounded by the seraphim, these six-winged angelic beings that fly around crying, holy, holy, holy. And Isaiah can't even describe God. All we learn is that the hem of God's robe fills the temple. We don't even hear about the full robe, the, the amazing shoulder pads and epaulets, the, the beautiful terry cloth and sequins. Just the robe, just the hem, just the very bottom of the robe. It fills the entire temple. And that's the only thing that Isaiah can say about God. And of course, the prophet's reaction to seeing God is not some colorful interjection, uh, nor is it a casual, oh, hey, Lord, uh, this is not talking to the big man upstairs. There is nothing that is familiar about this interaction. This is the numinous experience. This is an overwhelming encounter with the mysterium tremendum et fascinans, the, that terrible and fascinating mystery, the fearful and enthralling aspects of the holy. Basically, this is a moment uh, where you fall on your face in terror and awe. And so Isaiah says, woe is me, I, I am toast. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Isaiah is acutely aware of his shortfalls and his people's shortfalls. God is other. And when you really understand truly who God is and who you truly are, the only proper response is, woe is me. God is terrifying. And if we didn't have the revelation of the Son and of the Spirit, we'd still be dead. And this is where it, it behooves us to develop and prayerfully receive a robust understanding of the Trinity in our whole lives. Because a lot of folks seem to see God mostly as he is revealed in, in Isaiah 6. And that is a true picture of God. But if that's the only picture of God you're holding on to, then you are going to be scared of God. You're going to wonder if God truly accepts you or forgives you. And you might really be stuck on that question that I see in a lot of pamphlets. If you were to die tonight, do you know where you'd go? <laughs> if it weren't for our understanding of the Trinity that we've been given by revelation, that's where we'd be stuck. We would not be able to, as Hebrews says, approach the throne of grace with boldness, that we might receive mercy and find grace and help in time of need. We would be lamenting, woe is me, I am a man of unclean lips, who am I to approach God? So that's where we begin today. And by the time we get to the 8th chapter of St. Paul's letter to Romans, in the 14th verse, he describes the relationship we have with God as one without fear. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. There is, there is no fear, there is no terror, there is no woe is me. There's, there's a spirit of adoption. 
It means that we can cry out to God, Abba, Father. We, we have an intimate, close family relationship with God. And we can be joyful and be at rest and be at peace in the presence of God. We have a close and loving relationship that's not characterized by fear or anxiety or groveling or uncertainty. None of that. So how do we get from Isaiah 6 to Romans 8? We go to John 3. This, this long conversation between Nicodemus, a Pharisee, a leader of the Jews, and, and Jesus, this controversial, itinerant creature, and he. Nicodemus comes at night because Nicodemus is the establishment and Jesus is of questionable reputation. And, and there is a lot to this conversation. There's a lot of heavy slack. But I want you to hear the last verse in, in the pericope, the section that we read, which is not John 3.16. I know you thought that where, that's where I was going. But it is John 3.17, which is an astonishing, remarkable, complete surprise of a verse if you're coming from Isaiah 6, this all-filled all and all-full vision of God. Because Jesus says, God does, did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. If you have Isaiah 6 and, and his picture of God as your preeminent understanding, your only understanding, your, your main understanding, then, then condemnation is what you should fear. What, what legs do you have to stand on? Even Jesus, in the summary of the law that we recited, Gives, gives two legs to stand on. Just, just do these things and you'll be fine. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. You know, love God perfectly more than anything else. You can't love your TV more. You can't love your house more. You can't love your family more. You can't love anything more than God. And then you have to love your neighbor as yourself. Ha! Ah, that's not an abstraction. That is your literal neighbor. That, that horrible person who runs the Homeowners Association. <laughs> and if you run the Homeowners Association yourself, I'm not talking about you. You're just trying to do your job. It is the thing. <laughs> love your neighbor as yourself. Not just tolerate, not just so they get along with, but love your neighbor as yourself. If you haven't done those things perfectly, and all you've got is Isaiah and his picture of God, then woe is you, and woe is me. But Jesus says that when God sends his son, it is not. But Jesus says that when God sends the son, it is not to condemn. Later in Romans, Paul goes on to write, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. God the Son comes that you and I might be saved through what he does and through what the Trinity does, through the Son's life and death and resurrection. And that is how we get to Romans 8. And that is how we come to possess a spirit of adoption that allows us to cry out, Abba, Father, Daddy, which which is in by no mean, which is by no means taking the Lord's name in vain, and which in no means is woe is me. It is it is just the opposite, in fact. So this is why the Trinity matters, and this is why the Church has been very careful to articulate God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Not not three gods, not some kind of crack Marvel team of three divine superheroes, but one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity, neither confounding the persons nor dividing the substance. Because it is really important, even if it's hard to hold together. This is how God has revealed God's self, and it's what you and I need. We need the holiness, the majesty, the power, the beauty of God the Father. We need the mercy and compassion and the approachability of, of Jesus Christ, his Son. And we need the power and presence of God the Holy Spirit with us moment by moment. God present in you and in your life, working out your salvation. The Trinity is not some abstract doctrinal point that you just need to check off to get to the good place. It is the reality of who God is for you. And in his mercy, that's how God's self has been revealed to you. Everything you need, the holiness and power of God, the mercy and compassion of God, the ongoing power and presence of the Lord in your heart and your life. So don't lose the Trinity. Take that Athanasian Creed home, set aside the 25 minutes. Read it, mark it, inwardly digest it. 
and thank God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that he in his mercy has revealed God's self to you in this way. Amen. Amen. Christians, please stand to confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God for God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. And with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our Bishop Marty, our Rector Charlie, our Associate Adam, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our President, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Whitefish, Columbia Falls, and Kalispell, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and the will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For Kinsley, Miller, Mary, Claire, Bergen, Meg, Trey, Ivy, Sarah, Heather, Jessica, Daniel, Arnold, Scott and Jaden, Carrie, Candy, and Carl, Mariel, Helen, Diana, and Betty. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the absolution and remission of our sins and offenses, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Defend us, deliver us, and in thy compassion protect us, O Lord, by thy grace. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To, to thee, O Lord, our God. Heavenly Father. You have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petition, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Judge of the nations, we remember before you with grateful hearts the men and women of our country who in the day of decision ventured much for the liberties we now enjoy. Grant that we may not rest until all the people of this land share the benefits of true freedom and gladly accept its disciplines. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may abide in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please rise. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. May the peace of that God, that Christ, be always with you. And also with you. Share that peace with one another. that are in the hearts and prayers of those in this parish, right here on page 11 of the bulletin. 
Um, I believe we only have one of those graduates that's here today, but that's all right. Um, if you bring any gifts, don't worry, I got you covered. We have a line item for that in the budget. Um, so, we do have representatives, that's correct. So, uh, Amy, Leaf, I don't want to be all Leaf, Leaf, come on. So Mary has just graduated. She has she already graduated as she commenced. We were back there a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Mary has uh, commenced from Belmont University with a degree in materials. And so um, as a designer, we wanted to provide her with a redesigned prayer book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give that uh, to help commemorate all the blessed occasions to come. It's it's really cool. We have one for uh, Claire Carlos, who just graduated from St. Clair University with a degree in psychology. Study in business management. Okay. And you're in ROTC as well. Excellent. So, Phil, I'm going to give you um, an inscribed Bible, if you may want to take with you. Uh, plenty of room for notes in there. And uh, there's also some cash in there from the Canute family. It generally hovers around the Book of Romans. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then we also have a prayer book for the armed services. <laughs> we got a blessing now. Send you in the mail. <laughs> and the graduation blessing comes from John O'Donoghue, who is a specialist. Blessed be the mind, the dream of the day, the blueprint of your life would begin to glow on earth, illuminating all the faces and voices that would arrive to invite your soul to grow. Praise be to your father and mother, who loved you before you were, and trusted to call you here with no idea who you will be. Blessed be those who have loved you through becoming who you were meant to be. Blessed be the gifts that you never notice, your health, eyes to behold the world, thoughts to countenance the unknown, memory to harvest the vanished days. May you open the gift of solitude in order to receive your soul. Enter the generous generosity of silence to hear your hidden heart. Know the serenity of stillness to be enfolded anew by the miracle of your youth. Congratulations. Yeah. That is the most important announcement, obviously. A um, couple other items, however. Uh, after uh, after uh, Service today, right here, we have Sunday School for Adults at about 11.20. There's only three more sessions left uh, in the program here before yours truly takes a, uh, what I think is a well-deserved break. I do about 40 lectures a year. I, I love it a lot, but I also like to take a break. So please join us for that. We're going to talk about, uh, we're going to have our first of two sessions on the Prophet Daniel. Uh, there's some really cool stories. We're going to talk wonders of the ancient world. I'm going to show you slides from our hometown. Just Come bring us a coffee. Um, come on down. Nursery care is available during that time. Children's Sunday School will meet for, I believe it's last session next week, uh, over in the Education Wing with Janelle Willett, and then we'll be taking a summer break from that programming as well. Um, I heard that. I heard that. Um, Janelle will be uh, doing a lot of work down at Camp Marshall, our diocesan camp this summer, so uh, she's not off the clock. She's just shifting gears a little. Um, you will see if you receive the weekly newsletter that we have an updated uh, covenants, uh, conditions, and restrictions uh, uh, document for um, our basically homeowners associations of selling some property. We are, we are now the dreaded, dreaded homeowners association. Uh, we have had interest in the property, which is good news. Interest leads to the refinement of these policies, so we've had to make some changes. Please survey them. If you have any questions, please talk to Dan or any member of Vestry who should be finalizing those CCRs at the next Vestry meeting, which is on June 17th. Thursday Book Group kicks off again uh, uh, June 6th at 5 p.m. for our discussion of Marilyn Robinson's Dillion. If you have, it's 
my favorite books. If you haven't purchased it yet, please do so. I will send out a study guide to uh, sort of frame our reading on that uh, next Saturday. But you can get started. Read as much of it as you want right now. It's, um, it can either go fast or you, or you can really savor it. Uh, but either way, uh, if you enjoy it. Soup and Hymns will meet uh, Wednesday, June 12th at 6 p.m. This is our, our music fellowship. I don't know if you've noticed, but we have sort of a guerrilla choir going on in the pews. We love to sing. And uh, this group is for people that want to sing. It doesn't matter uh, whether you've any training, whether you're even good at singing. It doesn't matter what age you are. We have kids that are like two all the way up to like 72. So, um, so please join us for that. That's uh, uh, the 12th and 6 p.m. There's a fiscal day at Flathead Field for the Range Riders on June 23rd at 1 p.m. Um, if you haven't been to a ball game yet this year, uh, get on it. But uh, especially get on that one. Uh, it'll be wonderful to have some fellowship together um, in, in a different context. And if you would like to get the details of how to find yourself through the group ticketing process, please email Caitlin. Uh, her email is in uh, her bulletin. Other than that, we have summer camp, we have day camp. If you have a young person in your life that wants to go to camp, we will make that happen with them. Extend that invitation. Anything on your camp, yes. Since it's graduation Sunday, we do have a cake. We do have a cake. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's the other benefit of uh, okay. closing the program here for lectures is that I can eat a lot of cake and hard boiled eggs, which is what I, why I'm really a Christian. So please join us for coffee hour at your services. Nicole. Um, also, um, Mike and Joan have been very kind to kind of kick start our lawn mowing project um, because we're going to rely on the community this year instead of um, paying a landscaper to solely mow our lawn. Um, so Mike and Joan have done a week and Amy came and there through the rain. Um, but if you would like to participate in mowing the lawn or blowing up the sidewalks or what have you, um, there'll be a sign up sheet as long as Travis prints it up for me at coffee hour. <laughs> and um, if you'd like to help us, let me know or call me or text me or whatever. We, we'd love to have assistance. It is growing like grass in May. Yes, so. it's beautiful. <laughs> Birthdays, yeah, go in May. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, you, oh, man. May birthday? May, okay. Which day? Servants Ben and Miller as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and daily strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Sundays that we know it has to wonder what happened to Adam. <laughs> uh, thing two, uh, it's been a crazy week here and we have uh, uh, a mistake in the bulletin that Father Charlie and I wanted to point out. Uh, one of the blessings of our Anglican Episcopal uh, uh, tradition is that we have ordered worship and the Book of Common Prayer is loaded with, well they're not suggestions. They're canonically binding rubrics, and the uh, and, and these serve to to uh, frame and give character to the different seasons of the year. And Easter tide, which ended the last Sunday, Easter tide begins on Easter, all fifty days, all the way to Pentecost, has a very special, distinctive character. Now I know that every Sunday, in a certain sense, is at Easter. Every Eucharist celebrated is in a certain sense at Easter, but Easter time is a special season which infuses the rest of the year with its presence. Now, to the point, the double Alleluia 
at the end of the dismissal he is designated as an Easter tide, as an Easter tide practice. And so that would have ended as it did last Sunday. And Father Charlie and I would break this as one of our pet peeves that this tradition be respected. Now there are other clergy we see otherwise. They're gone, of course, but uh, <laughs> uh, it's in the book. It's in the book. So at the end of the service, uh, this would have a seat printed, and when I chant, let us bless the Lord, you may then respond, thanks be to God. There you have it. <laughs> <laughs> Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. Our offertory hymn is found in the bulletin, I, the Lord of Sea and
to give you thanks. For you are Lord our God, living and true. Well in light, inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless wrongs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. Reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and in rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new and that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world, and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them until the end. At supper with them, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption. 
recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gift that you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body, one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with Nicodemus and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, all, un all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. These are the gifts of God, for we were the people of God. So please take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith. With thanksgiving.
Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we are your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and all of the humanity. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. For the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray with such awareness of your mercies, that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to him, to you, the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And may the blessing of the Holy and Undivided Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, rest upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Please join me in singing our recessional hymn, number 420. Immortal, Invisible. Thank you. 